Welcome back. It continues to amaze me that the Florida legislature failed to do anything to prevent tragedies like the one we saw in Surfside last year. 98 people died when the Champlain Towers collapsed, and yet the Florida House and the Florida Senate could not agree to needed reforms. Last week, I spoke to State Representative Danny Perez, who was the House sponsor of the bill. Today, I speak to the Senate sponsor, Jennifer Bradley from North Florida, about why they couldn't reach an agreement. Surfside was just a horrific tragedy that unfolded last summer. Um, and what you realized when we started going through the causes, not only the structural causes and need for inspection, but when you started looking deeper at the real problems that were present um, in terms of condo administration and association administration, uh, we really realized that our, our owners, our condo owners, were really flying blind. Uh, they didn't have the information that they needed. They didn't have the budget tools that they needed. So it really opened up a lot of our condo statute in terms of uh, really reforming it, updating it, making sure that condos were uh, in their best financial health um, and that our owners were able to make really fully informed decisions. Uh, that proved to be a, a tall task for 60 days. Um, and, and ultimately, uh, regrettably, we did not get over the finish line. So there was common ground when it came to the need for inspections to be done. That's right, Jim. And so, so first of all, there are no, there's no statewide, there's no requirement statewide uh, for inspections of any of our condos or, or high rise dense residential buildings. Uh, there's a few counties in Florida, down in South Florida, Miami, Dade and Broward, um, that countywide have set up their own, their own, and they call it a recertification system that send uh, uh, qualified individuals through the buildings to check for structural integrity issues. Um, there was a lot of common ground on that portion of the bill on what we called in the Senate, the milestone inspection. And that was having people go through the building and make sure that it was a safe place. So if you go to bed at night, uh, you had a safe place that you could uh, uh, wake up. Uh, and, and it also provided that information, uh, some transparency. That information was given not only to the unit owners, but it also went to our local building officials. And that gets us into a conversation about reserve funds. What we were finding after Surfside is that some condominium associations we're waiving the collection of these reserve funds. We're waiving some portion of reserve funds so that when critical repairs needed to be done, there was no money available to it. Talk to me about the difference between the House bill, which said that there could no longer be any waivers of reserve funds, and what you were trying to do in the Senate, where you were trying to allow for some waiving or the ability to waive reserve funds. Uh, I think we learned during during uh, Surfside that uh, it is much easier and much cheaper to fix uh, to fix repairs before they get to the level uh, that we see in some of these older buildings. And so once you have owners who are fully informed that there are reserve studies done, they know exactly how much needs to be reserved, and now they are charged with reserving them. And then you enter the area of, of whether you can waive them. And, and that was a point of, of disagreement between the Senate and the House. Uh, the Senate said, uh, did not provide any flexibility, fully fund, out of the gate, no waiver. Uh, the Senate really balanced, not balanced safety, but we balanced the ability of some of these associations to make some of those decisions uh, with by and through informed membership. Uh, you know, the current law now is that you can have a majority of the quorum at a meeting can fully waive reserves. And that's just unacceptable. That doesn't give our unit owners any ability to know uh, what's happening financially with their condo. So what the Senate bill did- Give me, wait, let me just, let just hold you there because I think that's a really important point. And I just, I don't want to, when you, we start using terms like a majority of a quorum, I just want to break it down because I think you would use an example with me. Let's talk about a hundred unit condominium building. What would, what would it take? Are you saying that it would require 51 of the condo members to the owners of those units to waive the reserve fund? Or is it even a lower number when you start talking about majorities of quorum? It's, it's much lower. Current law, say you have 100 unit owners and the quorum is 25. A majority of quorum would be 13 individuals. I talked to a condo yesterday. Uh, they have 25 units. A quorum is three, which is the board. 
which means that two individuals could fully waive uh, funding reserves for the entire building. And the rest of the building wouldn't even know this was occurring unless they attended the meetings. Correct, correct. And that's unacceptable. Uh, both the House and the, uh, and the Senate uh, recognize that that is no way uh, to have unit owners making decisions about their, uh, about their investments and about their safety. So the Senate version took that limit and we raised that threshold. We didn't, we didn't take away the ability to waive, but we took that threshold up to two thirds. And we said, look, if you have a meeting called by the condo where the budget is being discussed and you have 66%, two thirds, uh, agree that there needs to either be a waiver, and it doesn't necessarily mean a full waiver, you would need this even just to do a partial waiver. Let me ask you this, when you say two thirds, are you talking about two thirds of the quorum or no, two thirds no. of the entire building? Two thirds of all unit owners of the entire building. So, so both the Senate and the House bill raised that threshold up considerably from current law. The House, the, the House said no waiver at all, and the Senate said 66, two thirds of the entire building. So there was a difference on whether or not there should be any flexibility in the equation for whether way, uh, reserves are even partially waived. But what, let me, let me just, let me make the argument that I know State Representative Danny Perez made. There should be no waiving of, of, of reserve funds because you shouldn't play games when it comes to the safety of a building and the lives of the people who live in it. Even if two thirds of the people in that building want to waive, sometimes government has to intercede for the benefit of the of the of the smaller group, even though because lives may be at stake. Yeah, and that's a great point. And in a, and in a perfect world, uh, there would not be, we would make sure that every condo was fully funded and every repair was done on track, but we are transitioning from a system that is vastly different from that. And if we are not careful in giving our associations a little bit of flexibility, what we are going to find and what the stakeholders and have made uh, just expressed genuine concern is that we will have our senior citizens, those on fixed income, those on low income that are unable, say, if they want to have the flexibility to say, you know what, we're not going to reserve for the parking lot, but we want to make sure we reserve uh, for the roof. We, we allow a little bit of flexibility as we transition from our old model to make sure that there isn't just an undue burden and we don't look up in three years uh, and folks are being displaced, they have massive uh, special assessments. Uh, it's a balance that has to be, that has to be made. Safety is non-negotiable, uh, but in terms of funding the reserves and making sure that people are armed with the information, they have the reserve studies, they have the inspections, uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a process that will be a lot more meaningful uh, at two thirds and certainly exists now. Okay, so here's the here's the question that I keep wanting to get to then. Why couldn't this get done? I don't understand how, you know, between yourself and Danny Perez and staffs on both sides, you couldn't come to an agreement on something as important as something as tragic as what we saw on the surf side. Why couldn't this just get done? Well, I am, I am uh, equally as disappointed. I can tell you that in the last week of session, we were negotiating continuously. Um, when it was clear that the, that the reserves, the reserve study and that, that portion of reform with regard to the financial health of our condos, when it was clear that, that a compromise was not gonna be had, um, I, I took that portion uh, off the bill. I stripped that out of the bill and sent back to the house just the milestone inspection program, just so that we could immediately get started uh, doing inspections statewide in our condominiums. And ultimately that was not accepted by the house. And, uh, and, and I, I hope that we can uh, come back next year and, and, and get that passed. That was disappointing to not see that uh, move this year. All right, you just said a moment ago that, that hopefully you can take this up again next year. My frustration, and I think a frustration for a lot of people in South Florida is, why does this need to wait for a year? Why couldn't there be ongoing negotiations between yourself, Danny Perez, whoever the individuals are, to try to find, now that the session is off and the pressure of the, of the session is off, trying to find some common ground and then go to the governor and say, 
call a special session. We've got an agreement. We can get this done, you know, in a month from now, six weeks from now, eight weeks from now. Why do we have to wait an entire year? We, we don't have to. Session just ended last week. Um, and it would certainly be my desire to continue those conversation, engage more stakeholders, and, uh, and find a compromise so we can do just that and go to the governor and go to our presiding officer to the chambers and say, look, let's, let's bring everybody back and let's, and let's uh, get this over the finish line because we, Florida deserves it and uh, certainly Surfside deserves it. We are going to stay on this issue for quite some time. I guarantee you that. We'll be right back.